Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I will explain multiple linear regression in this format. Here x1 and x2 are the input variable and y is the output variable. So from given data set, we have to find out values of a0, a1 and a2. And by using this equation, we can predict output value y for given value of x1 and x2. In previous videos, I have explained least square method for linear and quadratic equation curve fitting. In linear curve fitting, equation format is y is equal to a0 plus a1x. And we can find value of a0 and a1 from given data set by calculating values of summation x, summation x square, summation of y values, summation of x into y values. And by solving this matrix, we can find value of a0 and a1 and we can put in this equation. In case of quadratic curve fitting, we are fitting given data in this equation format, where we have to find value of a0, a1 and a2 from given values of x and y and by solving this 3 by 3 matrix. Now in this video, we will see how to fit equation for two input variable x1 and x2 and one output variable by is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2. So by using least square technique, we can calculate the sum of square of residuals that is sum of square of errors. So it is the value of y minus value of y calculated by using this equation. So here we have to find out values of a0, a1 and a2 such that summation of e square will have least value. So for that purpose we can differentiate this equation partial with respect to a0, then partial with respect to a1 and partial with respect to a2 and we can equate equal to 0 and if we simplify then we will get 3 equation 3 unknown. So here unknowns are a0, a1 and a2 and values of summation x1, summation x2, summation y we can calculate from the given data set. So to solve this 3 equation 3 unknown we can put in matrix format like this. So this is the coefficient matrix, this is unknown matrix and this is right hand side matrix. So by solving this matrix we can get values of a0, a1 and a2. So we can say this matrix is the formula for multiple linear regression for two input variable x1 and x2 and one output variable. But we can extend this method of least square technique for more than two variable also. Now let us solve an example based around this multiple linear regression. So example is like this using least square method fit equation of the form y is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 to following set of data. So here these are the values of y that is output value and this x1 and x2 are the input values and here we have to fit the equation between input variable x1 x2 and output variable y. For that we need to find the values of a0, a1 and a2. So as I explained in previous slide this is the formula in matrix form to fit this type of equation. So here to calculate values of each term in this matrix, we will prepare one table. So here, in it is the number of data points. This summation x1 means summation of all x1 values. Then this is summation of all x2 values. Here, this is summation of x1 square values. This is summation of x1 into x2. This is summation of x2 square values. Then here, summation y values, summation x1 into y value, and summation of x2 into y values. So we need all these summations. So for this purpose we will prepare one table. So this is the given values. These are the x1 values. These are the x2 values and these are the respective y values. Then we need uh, x1 square. So we can take 2 square that is 4, 5 square 25 and so on. Then we need x1 into x2 and x2 square. So x1 into x2 we can calculate like this 2 into 1 2 5 into 3 15 and so on. 
Similarly, x2 square value that is 1 square, 3 square it is 9, 4 square it is 16, and so on. Then we need x1 into y values and x2 into y values. So we can calculate here x1 into y values and we can write here and then x2 into y value and we can write in this column. And here we need summation of all these values so we can calculate some of these values. So here in first column we can write the total number of data points. So here total number of data points are 6 so n is equal to 6. So that we can write here. So by using this last row we can uh, prepare the matrix. So here uh, this n is equal to 6. Then summation of x1 it is 42 we can write here. Then summation of x2 it is also 42 we can write here. So here again it is summation of x1 so it is 42. Here it is summation of x1 square so summation of x1 square it is 350 so we can write here. Then summation x1 into x2 so summation x1 into x2 is 377 so here also it is summation x1 x2 so here 377 and 377 summation x2 square it is 424 so we can write here and right hand side matrix it is summation y so summation y it is 14.5 we can write here then summation x1 into y it is uh, 105 so we can write here then summation x2 into y it is 104.7 so we can write here so in this way from the given data we can prepare this matrix now here we can solve this matrix so we can find value of a0 a1 and a2 so we can solve this by Cramer's rule or we can use any other method of solution of linear simultaneous equation like uh, Gauss elimination method so here in this example I will use Gauss elimination method to find values of unknown a0 a1 and a2 i have prepared separate video in which gauss elimination method is explained in detail here we will use that method for more details you can refer the earlier video and link of that video is given in the description of this video so here we will do the partial pivoting so for partial pivoting this pivot element should have greater value out of these three so we will exchange r1 and r3 row so by exchanging r1 and r3 row we will get this matrix so while exchanging a0 a1 a2 remains same and this 42 377 424 it is first row and this first row will be third row similarly on right hand side also this 104 will be here and 14.5 will be in r3 row now we have to do the forward elimination in forward elimination we have to convert this matrix into upper triangular matrix so in first step we can convert this 42 and 6 into 0 by performing operation on r2 and r3 to perform this operation we will use r1 row so operations will be r2 is equal to r2 minus some factor into r1 so what is this factor which element we have to convert to 0 42 and by using which element this 42 in the first row so here factor it is 42 upon 42 so if you simplify this operation will be r2 is equal to r2 minus r1 and second operation it is on r3 so uh, we have to write operation to convert this 6 into 0 by using r1 so operation will be r3 is equal to r3 minus factor into r1 so here r1 because we are using r1 row to perform the operation here also we are using r1 row to perform operation on r2 so basically in first step to perform operation on r2 and r3 we have to use r1 row so that's why here it is r1 and here how to write the factor which element we have to convert to 0 6 so it will be at numerator and by using this element we have to convert that element to 0 so at denominator it is 42 so if we perform these two operation on r2 and r3 then this 42 and 6 will convert into 0 and uh, remaining values in r2 and r3 row will be uh, changed to the new value so we will get this updated matrix now in second step we have to convert this minus 11.86 into 0 so to convert this element into 0 we have to perform operation on r3 
and here we have to use R2 row to perform the operation. So our operation will be R3 is equal to R3 minus factor into R2 because we have to use the R2 row here to perform the operation. So factor will be uh, the element which we have to convert into 0 that is minus 11.86 divided by minus 27. So here minus 11.86 divided by uh, minus 27. So if we perform this operation on R3 row, then this minus 11.86 will convert into 0 and this minus 18.57 and minus 0 0.457 will be changed to the new value. So this is the updated matrix. So in this way, we have converted this 3 by 3 matrix into upper rectangle matrix by converting these three elements into 0. Now we can do the back substitution to find the values of a0, a1, a2. So in back substitution, first we have to use the R3 row. So for R3 row, we can write the equation and uh, the 0 into a0 plus 0 into a1 plus 2.069 into a2 is equal to minus 0 0.589. So uh, here, if we write the equation, then unknown is a2. So by rearranging this equation, we can get value of a2 is equal to minus 0 0.284. Now uh, we can use R2 row to write the equation. So by using this R2 row, we can write the equation 0 into a0 minus 27 into a1 minus 47 into a2 is equal to 0 0.3. And here, uh, this a2 value we have already calculated. So this a2 value we can put here. So here unknown will be a1. So by rearranging this equation, we will get value of a1 is equal to 0 0.484. Then by using R1 row, we can add the equation 42 into a0 plus 377 into a1 plus 424 into a2 is equal to 104.7. So here uh, we have already calculated values of A2 and A1. So we can put those values in this equation and here only unknown is A0. So by simplifying this equation, we can get value of A0 as 1.018. So in this way, we will get values of uh, A0, A1 and A2. So after calculating these values, we can put in the equation and we can write the equation y is equal to 1.018 plus 0.484 x1 minus 0.284 x2. So this is the curve fitting for two input variable x1 x2 and one output variable. So to check the goodness of this equation we can calculate the correlation coefficient or coefficient of determination. So this is the correlation coefficient. Uh, or if you take square then it is square of correlation coefficient which is also called as coefficient of determination so r square it is coefficient of determination so here we can write in this format or in this format here st it is sum of distance square between y value and y mean and sr it is the sum of residual square residual means error so error means it is uh, given value of y minus modeled value of y so here significance of coefficient of determination is it will indicate the goodness of our equation which we have developed for perfect fit value of sr that is sum of residual square if it is zero then r square value will be equal to 1. So it is the perfect fit equation. So equation will be perfect fit. And if sr is equal to st, then r square is equal to 0. And that fitting it is not good. Means uh, by using that equation, we will not be able to predict value of output variable y for given values of input variable x1 and x2. So to calculate this uh, coefficient of determination, uh, we will prepare table. So, so these are the values and from the equation, 
we can calculate the values of y so we have developed this equation in this equation we can put values of x1 and x2 and we will get the y value so these are the values which calculated from the equation and these are the values of y which are already given to us so these are the given values of y and these are the values of y calculated by using this equation so that is y model then we can calculate value of square of difference between y values and y mean uh, so to calculate y mean we can take sum of y value here it is 14.5 and divided by number of 0.6 so y mean it is 2.4167 then we can calculate residual square values that is uh, given value of y and value of y which we calculate by using this equation and it's a square so this is the residual square values and we need sum of these values so here this 0 0.7883 it is st and 0 0.002899 it is sr so by putting these values in this equation we can get value of correlation coefficient r is equal to 0 0.9981 and if we take square of this r then r square is equal to 0 0.9963 which is the coefficient of determination so here this r square value it is near to 1 means this equation which we developed will be able to predict value of y for given values of x1 and x2 so in this way we can develop the equation between two input variable x1 and x2 and one output variable and we can calculate the coefficient of determination which will indicate goodness of the equation thank you